Saturday morning. I've got a shoot in Salt Lake. Afterwards, I thought I'd do a little. <sighs> Afterwards, I thought I would do some street photography and compare the 80D that I still have on rental to the XT2. Mostly, I'm going to compare how well they vlog on the video side. We were going to do it at the Memorial Groves in Salt Lake City. Memorial Garden? Memorial something. Some, some green place, park-like in nature, where they remember people. Anyway, uh, it's too rainy. Fortunately, I'm not completely inept, and I did have a backup plan already, and that will be to shoot inside of the Capitol building. Um, downtown Salt Lake City, so that's where we're headed. Well, photo shoot done. Successful, I believe. I did this shoot with the XT2. Oh, that was loud. That photo shoot went pretty well. It was a beautiful family of four. Uh, the two little girls, ages four and nine, I think. Um, but it was frustrating. We had uh, buses full of Japanese tourists who were obsessed with these two little cute blonde blue-eyed girls and would not leave them alone. Just snapped photos the whole time. That was difficult because we were trying to get good shots, but um, everywhere we went, we had what felt like paparazzi following. Very distracting. I tried to get in the way of the cameras to get my own shots. Um, I, I tried to explain that they weren't wanting their photos taken. Yeah, they were just smiling at us and would continue to take photos. So I had to get really creative to find locations where there weren't throngs of Japanese tourists um, trying to take photos. And that was, so that was fun. I think it, I think to some extent it, it worked. I think we were able to find some good spots. It really got me out of the comfort zone, honestly. It was a good exercise. I didn't go to the spots that were like the obvious spots. Uh, had to find little nooks and crannies. And I think that worked fine. So now I'm giving myself an hour to do some street photography downtown. Uh, before I, I have to give myself limits, otherwise I just go all day. And, uh, I don't think Danae would be too happy with that. I'm gonna do, I'm really out to test the capabilities of these two cameras, the ADD and the, uh, the X-T2, to see which one I like better as a vlogging camera. Um, so, and I'm not as concerned with the 4K video and other things. What I really want more than anything is just really, really, really good continuous autofocus so that I can not worry about it. I can put the camera down, and it will just find me and I can do my thing because most of the time I'm filming myself when I'm vlogging. So I really don't want to have to worry about it. That's my main question. My question is which of these two cameras do a better job? So I'm gonna start with filming with the X-T2, which I have been filming with. And I'm gonna take some street photos. I mean, it's kind of dead out here on a rainy Saturday. So most of it might be just, you know, architectural or whatever. Not sure how many people are doing anything interesting, but you know, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna shoot starting with the ADD with a six to 15 millimeter. This is not a normal street setup, I know, but uh, I really like fisheye, uh, so I'm gonna try that. Anyway, so here we go. I'm gonna do a half hour of this and then I'm gonna switch cameras, and do a half hour with that. This is definitely not my camera of choice when it comes to street photography. It's too loud. One thing I like about the fisheye is that if I'm walking by somebody that I think is interesting, 
I like that I can shoot from the hip with this so easy because pretty much everything's in focus and it's not hard to <laughs> get them in frame because of the fisheye. talking about it's been more than a half hour I just can't stop so I'm gonna switch I'm gonna make myself switch now we're gonna make this go to that and that go over over here there it is the X-T2 I think I prefer this for street photography because it can be silent um, but I do like the fisheye on that one all right half hour here we go That security guard was telling those people they couldn't be on the property. I think it might have been because they were panhandling, but I hope that's why, and I hope it wasn't just because they looked really shabby. I'm not a huge fan of like city bikes in a row shots. They're so overdone, but I just need stuff to shoot today, so. I'm gonna take a soul-sucking city bike shot. I feel that I've died a little bit inside. Now I find all the people. They were all here. Well, Danae just called, wants me to come home, so I will obey. But I'll try to get a few more on the way, but yeah, I didn't take as much time with this one as I wanted to with that one filming, with this one taking. Ah, uh, dead end. So, you know, I'll only have a few photos to show for it. Like I said, what? you want me to take a photo of you? Yeah, sure. She was nice and let me took one, take one with my camera too. <laughs> the obligatory reflection shot. We're going to do some fast action puddle droplet. Oh yeah. I don't think I was filming when I took that. Last one. Okay, I really got to get home, but I just can't stop. It's too hard to stop. I'm addicted. At one point, it was so bad with those tourists and that family, there was a guy who parked his tripod right in front of the family, right where I was trying to shoot, just right on top of me. And, uh, Can't see. And I 
couldn't get him to leave. Um, I was trying everything I could to be like, hey, I need to, I need to shoot here. I need to shoot here. And he, uh, he just was, yes, yes, yes. And I said, no, 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 <laughs> you're not getting it. And so I'm not usually, you know, usually I'm, I'm a pretty nice guy. I don't uh, try to get feisty with people. But I got right up into his camera and just stared at him. And then, so he moved, and so I moved with him. And we just kept kind of doing that until finally, I think he got the, the hint that we didn't really want him there. And I, I went, bye. <laughs> tried to smile, tried to be nice. The family was not comfortable with this guy right there with this wide angle. So anyway, that was frustrating. As far as the street photography I just did, that was fun. I would have liked to shoot for longer. What's my initial assessment of the 80D versus the X-T2? Well, for street photography, that's, I mean, it was never a question, right? The X-T2 is better. But as far as like vlogging, that's the, that's the main question again I'm trying to answer here, is which of these two camera bodies I would use for vlogging. Um, and uh, so far, uh, you know, the one thing, the only thing the ADD has that I wish that the XT, or I said that I wish the XT2 had, was a fully articulating screen. But I did not use the articulating screen once on the. In fact, I'm not using it right now on the ADD. Um, I would rather just have a camera I can trust to focus on my face when I point it at my face, and uh, you know I can get the exposure right beforehand. The, the, the screen flipping out, it might be nice. Uh, I haven't tried it. I just completely forgot that I could use it. So to me, that means maybe I'm okay without the articulating screen. I don't know. Maybe when I stop up here, I'll flip it around and try it. Although when I'm driving, I don't necessarily want the distraction of the flippy outy screen anyway. So I don't know. Maybe that's not as big a deal to me. I think camera manufacturers need to embrace the term flippy Audi, saying fully articulating. Just lame. I want to see in your spec sheet, Canon, I would like to see flippy Audi screen for the ADD, please. Please use the term flippy Audi. I promise. I promise that I will buy one if in your manual you use the term flippy Audi. And yes, Canon does care a great deal about my opinion, okay? It's time to get some footage of me driving. So I'm gonna pull off and I'm gonna face the camera forward to get that good cutscene of the car moving so that you get the experience of me driving from Salt Lake back home again. Because that's what a good vlogger does. Now, I know that Danae would like me to get home as soon as possible, and I, I am going home. I'm on my way. So I do have a bit of a moral dilemma here. There are two ways that I can go home. I can go home this way, which is over the mountain, through the clouds. Very beautiful. It would take 10 minutes extra or so, maybe 15, depending on how much I enjoy the clouds. Or this way which is the boring around the mountain way on the freeway which way would you go This is where I find myself. No, not because of my driving. I think I have kidney stones. But now I'm on pain medication and everything is better.
and never watch TV. It's such a waste of time. Now vlogs, on the other hand, not a waste of time. But when I'm in the hospital, then I watch TV. Okay, day two of this one day video. I've just been laying around editing photos and working on giving birth to a healthy baby kidney stone. As I was reviewing the footage from yesterday, I realized three things. First off, uh, the little dial on the right side when you're facing the X-T2 that changes um, the focus from manual to continuous to single. I think I had bumped it to manual twice. Um, and so there was some footage I just had to dump. Some I had to keep because of the context, but it wasn't in focus. I'm sure you noticed that. Um, and I think I would have caught that if I'd had an articulating screen. And I don't think I'd had that problem to begin with if that wasn't so easy to bump. And I'm not sure if it's just my style of handling the camera or what, but for whatever reason that happened. Second thing, although I really enjoyed shooting with the, this beauty, um, the fisheye 8 to 16 millimeter Canon, um, every, since everything's pretty much in focus, I wasn't really testing the focusing ability, the continuous focus ability of the ADD. So um, I realized my testing still isn't quite complete for my needs. And then third, um, I, uh, I was just shooting in factory um, video. I'm not a video guy, you may have noticed by now, um, but uh, I probably should have had them both at the same. They were both at 1080p, but the, the X-T2 was set at um, 60 frames a second, whereas the Canon, the ADD was set at 30. So I'm gonna do a few more tests. I'm gonna bolt, set them both to 60. I'll keep it at 1080p. I'm not really gonna test the X-T2's 4K. And you can get that from other videos. I'm comparing these two bodies and the ADD doesn't have it. Um, I also don't really desire it myself because the content I'm publishing goes to YouTube and it's... So I'm gonna do a few more tests with those things in mind. Um, and then also, the lenses, I'm going to change to, uh, well, it's already on the, the Fuji, but it's the 27 millimeter 2.8 um, pancake lens, which I've never really used before. So I'm gonna do the test with that. And then on ADD, I'm gonna use a 35 millimeter 1.4. And I do realize that these lenses are drastically different in quality. You don't need to comment and say, oh, you should compare. Again, the biggest issue for me is just to determine which of these two bodies does the better job of picking me up and staying focused on me as a vlogging device. Okay, we're at F2.8 on both bodies. ISO 1000, shutter speed 80, or is it 60? Yeah, something like that. We're just gonna test here, see how well it picks me up and follows me. The pancake lens is much louder as it searches for me than the 35 millimeter for what that's worth. All right, let's try me walking in. Okay, I'm gonna up the ISO and try a little bit darker of conditions and see what we see. Okay, we're at ISO 3200 now. All other settings remain the same. Okay, now I'm doing everything pretty much auto. This is all aperture priority mode now. I'm gonna test going in from outside and see how we do. Oh. All right, you guys, I think this is all the testing that my body is capable of at this time. So, time for final analysis.
it's day three now of this, what was supposed to be a one day video. Um, and I just reviewed the rendered footage um, that I took over the last couple days, uh, the test, particularly the test footage from last night. Um, I really wish that I had more time to test, but um, just ran out of time and, and didn't feel that great. So anyway, the ADD is on its way back to the rental place. So I did what I could with it while I had it. And now I'm going to dive into some of my conclusions. Um, now, please take what I'm gonna say with a grain of salt. I already mentioned I'm not a video guy per se, and I didn't have the, all the time in the world to do really, really in-depth um, testing. Um, I did enough to where I kind of feel comfortable with what I wanna do, and if that benefits you also, that's great. Um, but again, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, you saw the footage, you know. Now, having said that, um, I did feel like in general, the X-T2 had a snappier autofocus. It seemed to be a little bit more responsive. Now that's not to say that there are times where it missed focus and, and both cameras, you know, at times missed focus. That's to be expected um, to a degree. But when it was on and when it got focus, it seemed to get there a little bit more quickly. And like when I would leave the frame, it seemed to pick that up quicker and, and focus on the background more quickly than the ADD did. Um, and I, I have to say it was a slight difference. This wasn't like hugely obvious, but enough to where I feel, I feel fairly confident that the X-T2 is gonna do a better job for my uses and my purposes as far as continuous autofocus. But again, it's pretty small. You really could go either way with either of these cameras. They're both great cameras with great technology. Um, but if, and so if we were to say that autofocus is a wash, that let's say that, that we couldn't determine that one is better than another, um, let's go to the other factors. ADD has a fully articulating screen that I forgot to use. I'm sure if I'd remembered to use it more, I would have benefited from it. Um, and uh, um, I'm sure that it would come in handy. Um, I also feel like the ADD in general has a little bit easier of a setup for video. Um, X-T2 is obviously set up very well for still photography and video it maybe is a slight afterthought as per the, no the norm with most, most camera manufacturers. But Canon's been in the video game a little longer. Um, doing video well for a little bit longer. You'd think that that would have translated into a better experience for the Canon Mark, uh, 5D Mark IV, but that's another story. Anyway, I still feel like the ADD is set up just slightly better for video as far as interface goes. Um, I did uh, mess some things up due to user error with the X-T2, but I think I can overcome those through use and experience um, and become a little bit better and, and work around the difficulties I had with it. So that's fine. Um, in addition, the ADD did, uh, cr uh, one of my files did come back corrupted after recording and I'm not sure why, I don't know what happened. The battery got bumped funny or um, something power wise or something, maybe something happened to um, the memory card. It wasn't the whole memory card, it was just the, the, one, um, the one take that was corrupt. Was it came back with a DAT file, um, which sometimes you can recover. In this case, I wasn't able to. So um, I don't think, I don't know that that would be completely solved with the Fuji, but I do feel comfort in having the dual uh, memory card slots on the X-T2. So that is a slight win for the X-T2 and, you know, a slight discomfiture when it comes to the ADD. Um, finally, and this is probably other than autofocus, this is actually the biggest deal to me. Um, and that's the classic Chrome look. I love it. I really love it. Um, and for me, if I can save time in my workflow and my post processing, um, in the color grade, grading phase and whatnot, um, by using the classic Chrome, um, I'm totally gonna do that. And you know, that works for me, I love it. Um, but that might not work for everyone um, in every situation. And so that may not matter to you. But for me, that's a huge win for Fuji. Um, I, I just liked the look that came right out of camera. And I didn't, you know, with Canon, I, I don't usually actually go in and do a ton of um, 
I, I do a little bit of color correction, but not a, not a ton, and I, I don't really you know want to spend my time there when it comes to vlogs, because again, I'm not necessarily a high-end video guy. So for me, um, the classic Chrome and filming and just putting dumping it right on my computer, editing it editing it together works great. Uh, I'm I'm totally pleased with that workflow. The last factor is the fact that the XT2 is lighter by a little bit. Um, so that's a win also for Fuji, especially when you're on the go as much as I am. With these vlogs, um, you want a light kit. So, um, to conclude, um, I, I'm definitely going to vlog with the X-T2 over the AD. Um, so, uh, but, it, but it was, again, I have to emphasize, a very close analysis for me. Um, I really would be happy with ADD as well. Um, so if anyone wants to give me one, feel free. I'll definitely use it. Um, seriously though, uh, I think the reason I went the X-T2 wins out is because the savings on workflow felt maybe a snidge snappier, a little bit lighter. Um, well, and I already have it. <laughs> so, you know, no bias there. Anyway, so for me, that's, that's the clear winner. That's all for now. Thanks.